um, one of the things we do try to talk to our patients about, especially patients who are plant-based, is rather than just have them worry about the different bioavailability of this protein versus that protein, is just sort of focus on how much leucine, lysine, methionine you're getting across the course of a day or even in the course of a meal. But I'd like to hear your guidelines around that. So many of the plant-derived proteins are low in lysine or, and or methionine. So that is always a discussion, of course. Uh, now, if you eat a lot of uh, meat alternatives, uh, often these meat alternatives um, lack or have a low amount of lysine or methionine. So a lot of these projects are spiked or fortified with those individual amino acids. Um, however, if you eat a well-balanced meal, you typically have different plant-based proteins in your meal that often compensate low lysine or low methionine. For example, one protein has a high ly lysine and the other one has relatively uh, high methionine, so they compensate. So that's why also your mom would say, have a, a, a diet that is balanced with a lot of different sources. Then the problems become smaller and you don't have to expect uh, huge issues, certainly not if you're consuming enough protein because uh, you can compensate for lesser quality by greater quantity. And that's also the confusion with, for example, the Game Changers documentary that you, everybody seems to have seen. If you have a huge football player and he's consuming a massive amount of food, I couldn't even care less where the protein comes from because simply by the mass of protein, he or she already compensates for lesser quality by the, the simple mass, the large amount of protein. Um, but if you, yeah, if you actually, so we, I mean, the hype is also here. I got a phone call from somebody in the hospital saying like, look, well, what do you think? Should we actually get only uh, plant-based foods for our patients? And I'm thinking like, oh no, uh, because quality becomes important when you actually have low quantity of food. So people that due to cancer or pain eat less, don't give them a, a, a high plant-based foods it sounds like you're doing a good thing, but you're not helping them at that stage in life. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting, right? You would think that the most vulnerable people, the smallest people, the people eating the least, the people who are, in this case, the greatest at risk for loss of lean mass need to disproportionately focus on the highest quality sources of protein. And, and, and so everybody means well, and especially that's also the communication between clinical care and science that often you think like, oh, a plant-based diet is healthier. Yes, it's healthier if you're over-consuming energy. And so if you need a, a more plant-based diet, it will allow you to eat less energy, become less obese or less overweight. But it doesn't mean it's good for everybody necessarily.